Hey, a peace moment family. So presently I'm in uh, the city center or downtown area of Nassau. I'm in Rawson Square. Uh, this is where uh, the House of Assembly is, the Senate House, the Supreme Court, etc. This is where the country conducts its business. But the reason why I'm here is because if you can see directly behind me is a statue of Queen Victoria. Uh, the writing state, uh, stating Victoria Regina, which means queen, et, which means and, imperatrix, which means empress. Uh, she was crowned in 1837, died 1901. All right. If you look at her statue, in her right hand, she's holding a sword, and in her left hand, she's holding a scepter, the sword representing, representing war, ready, being ready for battle, and the scepter uh, representing rulership or dominion. On either side of her, you will see cannons. And behind the throne, you will see lions uh, upholding, upholding her throne. This whole thing, this whole uh, symbolism here represents strength, all right? Now, I want you to look directly behind and above her. All right, so you will see four men. Those four men are the prime ministers of, of, of the Bahamas, post-1973, which was the year of independence for Bahamas. There's Sir Lyndon Penling, Hubert Alexander Ingram, Perry Glasso and Christie, and Hubert Alexander Minnis. All right, I want you to look at their position. You can see that their hands are clasped. This represents uh, a, a posture of gratitude, of supplication, of humility, and basically weakness. All right. The reason why I say weakness, if you look at it, a stark contrast between them and this queen here. This queen is holding a sword, being ready for battle, surrounded by cannons. Our black leaders, our four black leaders, are in a position of prayer. Like they're ready to go to a, uh, a praise and worship. This woman is ready to go to war to, to, to defend her nation, her crown, her throne. But my four leaders here are ready to go to a praise and worship. All right? This symbolizes weakness to the mind. Opposite this woman is Sir Milo Butler. I'm going to take you all over to him. Hold a second. All right, family. So here is Sir Milo Butler. You can see in his, in his uh, left hand, he's holding the Bible. In the right hand, with the right hand, he's giving thanks. Left hand, the Bible. Right hand, giving thanks and praises. Once again, this sends a message to the mind that no matter how you treat us, we will always give thanks. We will always accommodate you. This is one of our black leaders here. He played an integral role in... Uh, Bahamas attaining its independence, but more particularly for blacks to be able to put themselves in different position in this colonial culture. But you see, he uh, half of his body is gone. His bust is copper. That means it corrodes. This woman's statue is made of some type of marble or something like that. There is no corrosion taking place with her. That means that her image, her likeness, will forever be pristine and reign supreme. But us, we will always be in a position of prostration, painted on a wall, or being a clay bust, giving thanks for oppression. Now, for any uh, Bahamian dignitary that sees this, I am unapologetic about my perspective concerning this, because I have been passing this same image all my life coming downtown. And that's all I have seen is a continuance of colonialism. But I understand that that being in front of the House of Assembly, having a prime ministership, speaking English, wearing European attire, our lawyers wearing white wigs and robes, this is still the continuance of a colonial legacy. So you have no choice psychologically but to put this woman in a better position, in a stronger position than that of your own people. Their hands both the four prime ministers there and our past governor general here, there are no instruments of war in their hands. There is no indication of rulership in their hands. They are surrounded by no type of artillery. So this tells the mind once again that black people in general, even up to this day, 2018, are still in a position of weakness compared to those who conquered us. 
And the position of that queen being in front of the four black leaders of Bahamas, her position being in front of them, tells the mind that we will put our conquerors first and put our black people last. And we still do it today in terms of policy and economics. We put those who would want to conquer us, those who would want to harm our well-being, we put them first and we put our own people last. This, this position right here, this position right here, this tells the foreign investor, the foreign governments, that no matter how you treat us, no matter how you conquer us, we will always be appreciative, we will always give thanks, and we will always accommodate you. No matter how you oppress us, we will always give thanks, and we will always accommodate you. No matter how you colonize us, we will always put you first and put ourselves last. This symbology has to change. This narrative has to change. This affects the minds of the people here in the Bahamas and all black people who come here, whether known or unknown. So I just wanted to share it with you all. This is Bahamas. The people are beautiful. We're looking to the eyes of the black people here, black men and black women, I see warriors. I see warriors through and through. But if we push this image of weakness perpetually to our people, if we perpetually put our conquerors ahead of our own black leaders, if we constantly put the image of our conquerors as strength and our black leaders as weakness, we will always subdue that fire inside of ourselves to change our condition. So, I just want to share it with you all, all right? Bahamas is a beautiful place, man. Vibes. Yes, sir.